In this video, we are going to go through writing example two, max columns in MATLAB. So we're going to write a function with the header m equals max columns of a that will output a vector m that contains a maximum value in each column of the input array a. So we're going to take an array a, we're going to find the maximum of the first column, we're going to put that in the first index of b, then we're going to find the maximum of the second column, we're going to put that maximum in the second index of B. And then we're going to do the third column and we're going to put that third column in the third index of B. So we're going to do this repetitive action where we find the maximum value of a column and then store that maximum in B. The column we're finding the maximum of and the index of B where we're storing it are the same. So we only really need to keep track of one counter, which remember when we know how many times we want to do something, that's when we use a for loop. Uh, my hint here is start by defining B as an array of zeros with one row and the same number of columns of A. Then use a loop to fill in each index of B. So let's head to MATLAB to start that. I'm going to start a script function m equals max columns of a. You'll remember when we only have one output, we can either put the square brackets or not put the square brackets. It's when we have multiple outputs for a function that we have to put the square brackets. So just for simplicity, I'm going to leave them off. It's not going to change anything in my function, but if you like putting them there, go ahead and put them there. So our function is going to find the maximum of each column of A. And I just realized I have a typo here. This should be B based on this example here. So, um, yeah, the M should be B. I'm sorry for confusion. I will have fixed that typo by the time I post this video. So if you're watching the video and you're like, it says B, that's because I fixed it because I just realized. So find the maximum of each column of A and I'll put the maxes in a row vector B. So the first thing I'm going to do is pre-allocate B. So I'm basically going to fill B either with zero, zeros or not a numbers. Um, sometimes I like using not a number because it makes it really clear if I, if my function is not right. Whereas a zero might be the correct answer, uh, even though our function is not working. Imagine if the maximum of a certain column was zero. It might appear as if your function is working, but really it's not. So first let's pre-allocate B. But before we do that, we need to find the number of rows and number of columns in A. So to do that, we can use R comma C. Hate when Mallet does that, size of A. I know it's trying to help, but that the whole suggestions, it's only helpful when it's the right suggestion. So this is going to store the number of rows in R, and it's going to store the number of columns in C. So we're going to pre-allocate B. We're going to say that B is equal to, we want, um, let's do not a number times ones, and it's going to have one row C columns. So this is a one by C array, where it has the same number of columns as A. We could also do um, B equals zeros, one comma C. It's up to you which way you want to allocate. Do you want to fill it with zeros and then replace those zeros with the numbers? Or do you want to fill it with not a number and replace the not a numbers with zeros? Or sorry, with the maxes. So we know how many rows we've pre-allocated B, and now we need to fill in each column of B. So let's say 
that C maybe it's equal to 5. So right now we have B equals not a number, not a number. And one more. Five not a numbers. So what we need to do is we need to go through each column. So this is column one. We're going to find the max of that column of A, of A column one, so all the rows, first column of A. And we're going to store that in B1. So before we even write our loop, let's just code it for the first one. And then we'll try to figure out how we're going to make this repeat. So we're going to find the maximum of the first column of A and store that in the first index of B. Find maximum of column one of A, store that in B1. So the first index of B. So B1, so we want to store something in B1, so it goes on the left side, equals what do we want to store in B1? The maximum of the first column of A. So the maximum of A, not all of A, just the first column. And we say the first column by saying all the rows, first column. So A is A, all the rows, first column. So that's how we do this for just the first one. But we want to do this multiple times. We want to do it for the second one, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one. Which if we knew how many columns were going to be in A each time, we could just copy and paste this line and replace one with two, replace it with three, replace it with four, and so on. But we don't know how many columns A is going to be. So that's where our loop comes in. Instead of finding the maximum of a specific column, let's find the maximum of column J. And let's store that in the Jth index of B. So let's change this to J. And now at this point, it's saying, well, what is J? That's where our loop comes in. So we're going to say for J equals, what do we want to start J with? We want to start J with one, because we're starting with the first column, and we want to go all the way to the last column, which how many columns are in A? C columns are in A. C. I can end my for loop. Here I'm getting an orange error that says R is unused. So our options here, one, it will run even if it's orange. But if we want our code to be the most efficient and green and good to go, then we can either replace R with a squiggle which says, I know you're going to calculate R, but I don't care what it is. I'm not going to use it. Or we can keep R. We can come down here. Instead of saying all the rows, we can say the first row through the rth row. So that's another way. I know rth sounds weird, uh, but the first through row one through row R is what this says, uh, which is the same thing as saying all the rows. Um, I don't really like my formatting here, so I'm going to press Control -A, a to select it all, and I'm going to press this button up here or press Control i 
to fix my formatting. So now I can see everything a little bit better. So my function, I find the size of A, pre-allocate B, and then use my for loop. So now um, I don't think I have any errors, but let's check. I didn't think I had any errors in the last one, and I did. Um, so let's make an array. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, three, two, one. And that's ten. 44, I don't know, 37, 8. And my font's really big, so it's hard to see all of that. But let me just change that real quick. I thought making it bigger would make it easier to see, but sometimes it makes it harder to see. So repeating that line, this is my array. So I hope when I run my function, my output is 10, 8, 30, 7, 8. So let's try it out. Max columns of A, 10, 8, 30, 7, 8. Great. So before I end this video, I know there is a way to do this using the max function in MATLAB. So we didn't need to write this function because MATLAB can already do this. The reason we're writing these functions, even though they ex already exist in MATLAB, is to help us learn the nuts and bolts of for loops, if statements, and while loops because we really need to have a strong foundation in those before we go forward in the class and start doing more complicated functions. So even though I know MATLAB can already do this on their own, um, I wanna make sure that we also can do this on our own.